The Bye Bye Man is a terrifying story that falls along the lines of a Greek tragedy. And I would call it a Greek tragedy because the characters don't realize that they're doomed. And they fight the good fight and even do make great progress in fighting the Bye Bye Man. But in the end, he's far too powerful for them, for them to overcome. So it's a, it's a story of growth and, 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 and fear and redemption and um, anxiety and hallucination. And on the way they find out who they are, he brings out their worst qualities. What he does is he makes you your most lowest self. Trevor Macy and I are friends, and we've been friends for a very long time, and, and colleagues, uh, probably 15 years. And we've been looking for a movie to do together. He, um, I mean, I, I, you probably won't use this stuff, but I have to say, women don't get a chance to direct. They don't, they, people don't like, they, they think of a president, it's not a woman, look what's happening to Hillary. They think of an astronaut, it's a man. They think of a president, it's a man. They think of a director, it's a man. And it's really, 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 really hard to get in the position to get hired. And he gave me that opportunity and we, we talked about a bunch of projects. And then by my man, the rights of Bible Man came back to him. He had them, they, they went away, they came back. And when they came back to him, he showed them to me. And um, I just thought there was an extraordinary potential for the story. And I developed the project with my, with my husband, Jonathan Penner, and with Trevor. And we really worked on it for about three years. We worked on it, we worked on it, we rewrote it, we revised it. Um, and in the end, that's how the property came together. We, um, shopped it and um, we're very lucky to find Jeffrey Soros and, and Simon Horseman at LAMF. If you catch something like that, if you catch a disease and, and it makes you crazy, that's really scary. It's really scary to lose your mind and that's why this is a very modern horror movie. It's not a person running around with a knife. It's not a person who's going to jump out at you. It's not a haunted house story. It's, it's a story of losing your mind because you have a virus that gives you that. And that's, that's, that's what makes it something that's very um, unusual and, 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 and terrifying. He's a wonderful sounding board. Um, and for me, you know, directing is collaborative. I like to hear lots of ideas from people, but in the end, it's, it's up to me to choose. And I have my vision and my vision is, is clear and, and, and I plan and I work very hard before I get there so that it's almost a little boring when I'm on set. I have a very detailed shot list, a very, very detailed sense of transitions between scenes. We rehearse, I know what I want from the actors, but there's always something that you miss. And there's always something that could maybe elevate your game. And, and that's where he, he gives me um, support. Uh, Trevor does that too. There's, there's, a, there's a sense of partnership that I'm open to that maybe not everyone else is because I know my game is going to be better. And I, and I feel that I have um, a team com camaraderie. And while my vision is the most important and that is the one that we have to follow, I can't ignore great ideas because great ideas come from many places. And I, and I love working that way. Working with um, Douglas Smith was a great pleasure because he has an extraordinary instrument. He is a seasoned, brilliant, brilliant young man. I, I cannot say enough. I think he has, has, has a great career ahead of him. He has absolutely beautiful instincts. He is both funny and dramatically interesting. He makes great choices. He's vulnerable. He, he's open. He allows himself to, to be felt and he, um, he has extraordinary technique. I can't, I can't say enough. It, it was, um, a movie that he carried on his back and he did it, did it with great, great, um, grace and, and, and talent. Cressida Bonus is an extraordinary girl. Uh, when her first audition came in, um, I was really blown away. She was so available and beautiful and her work was so straightforward and simple and crisp. Um, 
Of course, she has this extraordinary life in England, you know, th this history with the Prince of England and all this stuff. And I remember I said to her, you know, I don't know anyone who could have a choice between being a princess and a movie star, but uh, I think it's a good choice that you're going to be a movie star. Um, and I believe that to be true. Um, you know, I worked with Cameron Diaz early in my career, and I would say that Cressida is the first person that I've come across that reminds me of, of Cameron. She has this um, absolute availability. She, when you, when you look at her and you look into her eyes, you see into her. She's so right there and available on the screen that I think people are gonna love her. Um, she's a wonderful, warm person, very self-deprecating and um, adorable, besides being gorgeous. Lucy Laviscount is um, a great pleasure to know. Um, he's um, English and, and hilarious and um, brilliant and um, gorgeous and bright and um, energetic and um, he makes people happy. You know, you, you can't be around Lucian and not love him. Um, and he really, really means it when he, when he, when he listens to you and he, he hears everything you say and he remembers everything you say. and. Um, He's a beautiful actor because he's, he finds the humor in everything. He drags himself to the bottom of his own soul to, 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 to fill out moments. He challenges himself and succeeds. He's, he's quite a brilliant, brilliant kid. He really is. She was an absolute delight. I was, um, a little nervous, I have to admit, you know, she has such a, a reputation, she's so brilliant. Um, and it was so um, incredible to work with her. She's this warm, you know, um, yogi. She's really like a yogi, you know, uh, um, um, uh, she's not an instructor, but she has a, a kind of a, a side that, that, that's very, 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 very powerful about the world being, you know, you know, living together in harmony. And, you know, and then she has this badass, persona, which is like this. So if you get to know her, there's a whole other soft level beneath her strength. And when we worked, um, you know, you know, the, the part she was playing was, was, a, was a, you know, a, a detective, you know, Detective Shaw. And she, she really, really, really brought it to an, a, a level of emotion that I wasn't expecting. Um, Carrie Ann Moss was um, really, really quite, quite brilliant and filled out moments that I, I, I would never have expected anyone to be able to do. And, and she brought um, a strength and a, and a, and a, and a genius to, to this part that is powerful in the movie, powerful. Doug Jones could probably be, possibly be the, the, the most brilliant, nice person I've ever met. He's so lovely, he's so warm. That he has this ability to channel evil is fascinating. It is almost like um, God and the devil are in one person. I don't know how to describe it better because he could not be more kind and lovely and brilliant, 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 brilliant. He doesn't speak in the movie. He, has, he does it all with his face and what he's bringing, the humanity of the bye-bye man, the darkness of the bye-bye man. It would never have been as good with anyone else to play this part. This is a part that only Doug Jones could have played, and I'm very lucky that he did. Faye Dunaway is a legend, and there's a reason. She's a movie star for a reason. She's quite brilliant, and she's complicated and fantastic. Faye Dunaway is a linchpin in the plot because she's someone who's been around and known about the Bible man for years, but she's never known his name, so she hasn't been infected by him. So working with her on the script was, you know, it was very intense. She was, she was very, very heavy duty on each line, each, each piece. She wanted to really, really, really pour through it. Um, and when she got to set, she really, really knew her stuff and she really, really had a handle on it. And she was very clear and precise. She really cared where the camera was, where the lights were. She's an old school movie star in that way that she knows that if the light is here or here, it better be exactly there. She has a, she has a, a presence that's profound and she did an incredible job. And um, I, I think people are gonna be delighted to see her pop into the movie. The Bye Bye Man is a slow, dark, intense trajectory and build toward an extraordinary climax. The Bye Bye Man is in, is, a, is in your mind, and it's like a virus, a disease that you can't cure. 
if I say to you, the bye-bye man, it stays in your head. It, it gets more and more powerful. He's telepathic. He gets closer and closer. As he gets in your head, he makes you hallucinate and do terrible things. And you're ill-prepared to deal with him. Hey horror fans, here are some cool facts from horror movies. Now rather than risk breaking continuity, Sissy Spacek slept in bloody clothes for three days while filming the prom scene in Carrie. And did you know that Stephen King based Carrie White in Carrie on two girls he knew while at school? Both were social outcasts from deeply religious families and both died while still in their 20s. Hmm. Now, have you seen Carrie? Did you like it? Let me know in the comments below and remember to subscribe to our channel and check the notification bell to keep up to date on all the latest releases.